It is time to say goodbye to the Great Lakes. We have had just a wonderful couple months here and we are at Hammond Marina and it's time to head down the river so a completely different set of navigation challenges and challenges for the crew so we've reviewed it. It's a distance of about 48 miles. We have 50 bridges that we're going to go under. About six to eight of them may have to open. Two locks and we'll see how the wait time is on that so let's go. Yes, straight out because that piling is on the, in the middle there. Saying goodbye to Hammond Marina. They should call this Horseshoe Marina because that is a giant horseshoe casino right there. We have a big day today. <laughs> Moving from Lake Michigan into the river system. It's always an exciting day to ch totally change the kind of waterways we're going on. 92nd Street Bridge uh, motor vessel here to us in Channel 1-2. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, we're looking for a downbound opening. This is a monumental structure here. It is the beginning of the Cal Sag. Now we're getting ready to go into a series of bridges and a couple locks. It's going to be a very busy day before we get to our destination. The next one's 23, so we're okay. Okay. Is this 95th Street Bridge? Yeah. Well, it does look like the middle is the highest point. Yeah. How's it looking to you? <laughs> it looks fine. Well, if we hear something scraping, uh, that'll be bad. That car going overhead sounds really loud. This is the 100th Street Bridge and we did have to have them open it. We are going through here on a Saturday morning and we are pretty much the only boat out here moving that need bridges open. It's just us and the fishermen, but of course those fishermen can go under all these bridges, so they've got it made. Sam is using channel 12 to talk to the bridge tenders, and when he can't reach them on 12, he'll use 16, and they have been very responsive to him. This 100th Street bridge tender, he's got a very white voice. 
I wanted them to break out into song. said 106 copy well he'll do it when you get closer so four bridges on the initial part of the cal sag here that we had to have open and it's actually gone pretty smoothly the first one we had to wait a little bit maybe seven eight ten minutes i don't know but it wasn't uh, bad the winds weren't bad and we stayed right there and so from there we kind of got the bridge's attention and the 106th street bridge is uh we alerted them and he said, hey, we'll get it when you get closer. And he has got that starting to go up there. You got to see a couple ambers there, which means, you know, it's starting to open. So technically you should wait for the greens uh, on there. But on that first bridge, I waited and I said, I'm waiting for the greens. And they said, bring it on by. So who knows, maybe the greens aren't working, but really want to try to follow the rules and wait for the greens because who knows what's going on with the bridge tender and uh, if he's got to manually turn those greens on he may be looking at something out there but for right now looks like we're going to go through here and take it on by. So we have uh, some commercial traffic here, just kind of a heads up on uh, that kind of stuff. You can see it if you have AIS, and I strongly, strongly suggest you have AIS on these rivers. It is more valuable than radar. If you can only afford one, you get the AIS, because uh, you will need that on the Great Loop on these rivers as these barges are out here they're working they're very professional um, and they can see you and kind of look out for you so uh, and then uh, you just make sure that you're not going to impede their work give them the right of way you be professional too and we're slowed down here so that we're not waking them lot of activity here on the south side of Chicago on the Cal Sag. There is nothing like going down the river and seeing a whole different way of work, of living. It is just incredible. I love this part of the trip because it's so different. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's a Saturday and people are out there working, earning a living, and just incredible what people do to keep our country going. 24 feet, no problem. <laughs> they all they all look low when we get right up here to them. Oklahoma 5 bridges over to Calumet River and an S5 Oklahoma 1. I didn't hear anything, did you? Clear dry. Cleared another one. <laughs> you think we're going to clear this? Oh yeah. This looks low. <gasps> Us. 
That was the on the side. You're okay. That one's supposed to be bigger than it, uh, taller than the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our um, side antennas uh, hit the top of that. No big deal, just uh, shake us up a little bit, huh? Yeah, that's supposed to be 24. Well, so, uh, uh, it wasn't. No, it's not. A couple more bridges here. The first one, 29 feet high. The second one, 25. So plenty of room. I don't know what happened at that last bridge because our um, antennas, that we did not take down are 19 feet high. So Sam wanted to leave them up as a precaution so we would hear and hear them if they if the bridge was too low and we certainly heard them shaking. So we know those hit on that last bridge that was supposed to be what, 24 feet high? Yeah, 24 or 22. Yeah, so. Depending on which uh, deal, either one should have been fine, but they were, they were uh, 19. So we have these two bridges, and then up ahead under that bridge is our first lock, and that is called the O'Brien lock. Sam already talked to the lock master, and he told us to go in. He'd be ready for us, although I see a, a red light there. He told us that, um, that a boat was in there now and um, then when it was when it's our turn to go in to he told us to just float in the middle instead of grabbing onto a side so that's going to be fun That looks like a crazy current on the other side of the gates. I'd say it's about a three foot drop there. Or maybe that's because the water's so low on the uh, Illinois River, El Sag, low water levels, higher up here. So normally it's only about two feet, but it sure looks like about three feet to me. Looking at the water line over there on the right. There are five railroad bridges here, all right together. the river I always have to keep an eye out for trees logs branches debris and that right there is a major major log right in the center of the river we are at mile 303.4 and we are nearing the junction on the starboard side there, you can see that's the, what's called the Chicago Sanitary Canal, uh, joining the Cal Sag route here with us, so a nice waterfall marking that, but Cal Sag and the Chicago Ship Sanitary Canal Junction. So there's about a five mile area on uh, the Cal Sag here that is pretty congested with barges uh, about mile three, 303 down to mile 298. 
Lanthaner is also the limiting factor for the Great Loop is coming right up and it's a railroad bridge that's at 300 and a half and to get more information on that you can go to our website whatyouhavetodo.com and we've written a blog that gives you all the ins and outs of that bridge it's not going to be taken down anytime soon so uh, you can go there and take a look at that so it's a fixed bridge it's a railroad bridge and it's at uh, 300 and a half and you will see varying heights for that. And so that's going to confuse you, 19.1, 19.7. Well, you can go to the blog and take a look at that, but it has to do with uh, how it's measured from a normal pool or high water and those types of things, and how you can determine whether your boat that you might be purchasing or your boat that you have can get underneath that bridge. So we are well underneath that for the water that it is now, because we're at normal pool currently, or just a little bit lower than that. So should not be a problem, but a very congested area. You wanna be um, watching out for barges here and toes that might be uh, backing out and uh, workers. So just keep your head on swivel. No, not at all. Aren't you glad there's not a lot of traffic here? Yeah. This could seem to be a little skinny here. If there was a barge pushing, you'd definitely want to coordinate with them. Pull off to the side and wait till they get to if they're coming upbound. The other thing is, I'm I'm hand steering it here just because I just want to be in control. The uh, wind is kind of, as we go through these barges, some of the, the wind comes through and pushes the nose. And I don't know if there's a tug up there that might be backing out. So always want to have your vessel ready for immediate maneuvering. Some of these blind corners here. So if you ruin your recreational holiday, so uh, just take it slow. We are approaching something called a fish barrier. There's a warning sign that says submerged electric fish barriers 3,000 feet ahead. High risk of electric shock, no swimming, diving, fishing, or mooring. In the instructions it says that we have to put our life jackets on. Life jackets must be worn on deck. So, it depends on how your boat's configured as to if you need a life jacket on. Sam's in an enclosed area here, but he still put a life jacket on. Yes, and uh, it's not called the fish barrier. <laughs> the new name is very long. It's got five words. It's the Aquatic Nuisance Species Dispersal Barrier. So. That's a mouthful. Now you know. Now you know the the uh, official name of the fish Here's barrier. That. Oh, here it is. There's the red sign. Yeah, the yellow sign. Uh, to warn, uh, warn you. you. And, uh, well, I guess caution. And mm -hmm. then now here is the real warning sign, which will probably say the same thing. But we have our life jackets on. And we also called the number that was in the Navionics and Active Captain. Um, for permission to go through, and it's been disconnected, so perhaps <laughs> I guess they don't, we don't care need anymore. anymore. We're going through it anyway, so we tried to call, and they weren't there. Here we go. Are you ready?
in Joliet there are four bridges that have to open for us. Jefferson is already open up there so we're gonna go boom boom and then dock at the park that's on the right hand side. Well what a great trip down the Cal Sag uh, currently here at Joliet, Illinois. We are the only boat here so far. It is uh, just a little after 2 o'clock in the afternoon, or get coming to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we're on the wall, expertly tied up by Rev, and we do have power. The air conditioning is starting to cool the boat down inside, so we are going to relax because 50 bridges, 8 which had to open, and 2 locks is enough for a day on the Great Loop. It's time to have some fun. Thanks for coming along.